Okay, guys, this is going to be my review of the Netflix original movie, Eurovision. And you know how I said on my What Happens to Monday and the Old Guard review, and how I talked about Netflix practically greenlights everything. That's how they create so many Netflix originals, is they practically greenlight everything. And so by, by, by kind of saying that, you kind of present yourself with some films will work and some films won't. And this film, for the most part, does not work. Like, I think the second half is, is a lot better than the first half. But that does not excuse the poor half of the fi- poor, poor qualities the, over the film, you know, overall. Like, our actors, who are supposed to be from the Netherlands, you know, like, Will Ferrell is supposed to be from the Netherlands, never, not Netherlands, I, um, Iceland. But constantly, constantly, constantly. Number one, the accent, honestly. It's pretty annoying because I feel like they don't, they don't, he just doesn't know how to do it very good. You know, an Icelandic accent, both, you know, him, you know, and the other lead. And I think, to kind of add on to that, for the most part, you know, again, they constantly drop the accent. That was already annoying, but it was, like, made it extra annoying when you can constantly tell them saying, like, stuff in the, that accent, and then be like, Aah. and that was annoying. And the, the dialogue between themselves, I could barely tell what they were saying. And then the jokes were not there. And I mean, the songs, you know, every time there was a song, you know, made the film a little bit better because I think the songs weren't all too bad. But that was like, okay, two songs. And, you know, the songs itself weren't funny. And, the, you know, I think like the best moment was probably when like the hamster reel fell apart. But that was so predictable because they talked about the dress earlier on in the film. And, you know, the final song was, was kind of good. And I mean, I mean, I mean, I kind of liked, um, the kind of antagonist of the film was kind of cool in his Russian accent. He was the only really good character and funny, you know, part of the film at all. But it's like, some parts were like, okay, it was good. And I think, you know, some parts I was entertained, but there was more non-entertaining stuff than entertaining. I think the most, actually the funniest part was when the boat, the boat blew up. And, uh, but what made that what took away from that was when they figured out that that was staged. It made it feel a lot worse because can you imagine how funny it is? It's like they weren't invited to a boat, you know, a boat party, and that then it blew up, and that's what caused them to be in Eurovision. I made it a lot less funny in retrospect when you figure out, oh, that was all part of this master man's plan, master guy's plan, who gets killed by an elf in the film. It's very weird. I mean, the Eurovision contest itself, it was not focused on. That's the thing. It's just like we talk about Eurovision, but that's really the, the kind of not really part of it. It's more mainly the relationship between that Russian guy and then the two. You know, It's really like a love story between the, the two of them with like that Russian guy causing conflict. With like the, the, the way everything. But yeah, it's working around this Eurovision theme because i think what's odd is like they don't choose to go on this because it's like the weird thing is there's like very much two different things going on you got the stuff of the two of them want to do you know win eurovision and then you got the two of them you know trying to find out that they love each other i feel like those are two radical different things that you know can work together but it's weird because like the eurovision actual part only comes in at the last like 50 minutes of the movie where they're like okay let's do the eurovision competition and I mean, they they kind of glass over, you know, glance over some of that stuff, and it was it was, it just it was it was crazy. But I mean, they didn't win it at all at the end. But it was it was fine, you know. The film, like I want to say that it was charming and good, but it's really not. Because I mean, like some of the stuff, like for again, for every one good joke, there was like a hundred awful jokes, and and that can't that that can't like really you know, hold up on its own, when it's like, every joke is bad in its own right, it just, in that sense, how can it hold up when, when, okay, you have a funny joke, but again, when it's supposed to be a comedy, then you kind of have to have more of the jokes. And it's another thing is that the story has to be good. And I think while I think having like these underdogs win a competition, like a song competition, or any competition, or any athletic thing, or do anything, I mean we've seen that story over and over again. 
I think having a comedic touch to it instead of just like an inspiring touch to it. I mean, it, you know, I guess it was also going for like an inspiring touch, but it failed on both the comedic and inspiring touch. But again, they didn't focus on the Eurovision stuff. They really focused on, you know, their two dynamic, like the dynamic between Sigrid and um, Lars. And it was like, okay, but I didn't care for those characters. Like I said, the accent was god awful. You know, their character weird motivations were weird, and Sigrid seemed dumb, and then Lars seemed even dumber. And then you got this other Russian dude who was weird because I didn't know what his true motivations were. Because, well, like, at first, they were like, okay, she, he likes Sigrid, so he wants to have be with Sigrid. But then they hint at the fact that he's gay and then all of a sudden he's cheering what's his face on cheering Sigrid on to be with Lars so I think his motivations were never really explained to like at any rate I mean maybe he just wants her for the music it was all weird now that makes sense so I think like ex- just exploring the Eurovision stuff because I think the songs weren't that bad so if you just stuck with this idea of underdogs winning Eurovision that would have been good but instead, they kind of mainly focused on Sigrid and Lars's relationship with, like, that Russian dude coming into the middle of thwarting their relationship and causing chaos. But I think, like, the film is two hours and three minutes. So, I mean, I guess long for comedy terms, but when you think of all this stuff that the film is actually trying to accomplish, whether you talk about Lars and his father, or you talk about Sigrid and Lars, or you talk about, you know, this Russian dude with Sigrid and their relationship and the actual you know, developing the romance between Sigrid and Lars, on top of it never being funny for the most part, and their accents are atrocious that they constantly drop, that I can under- can't understand what they're saying. The dialogue is pretty awful, and I- and they're pretty dumb. Like, that's another thing. It's, it's like, it's, they just are dumb, I think, like, for the most part. Like, is like, I don't, I can't imagine that's how Iceland people are. So it's like it's crazy that they, they really make them dumb. I really do get that impression. You know? So it's because it's like the actions in these, these films are just like some of the stuff, again, like he legitimately says. And some of the stuff Lars does, I can't, like, they don't make any sense. In the sense that it, Lars is just not a relatable character and not a character that I think is even remotely realistic. And if it was, if that, if there's people like Lars in the real world, or even Sigurd in the real world, then I kind of feel bad for them. I mean, in many ways, because, I mean, they're... and it's not like they make it as, they don't, it's not like they try to make the story feel like two people who aren't the smartest winning Eurovision. No, it, it, it's just supposed to be played for comedic relief, comedic laughs, that they're both not the smartest people and that they both are weird and quirky. But yet, it doesn't, it doesn't land for me. It just does not fall the jokes because it's just you know not even it's not even that it's like made for kids or made for adults it's i mean it sort of is and you know and some you know funny parts are are that kind of you know adult oriented but i think for the most part it was just there was no jokes that uh, could appear it was mainly jokes that just didn't work and wouldn't work for anyone it was just like plain failed jokes that are not funny by any stretch of the imagination for the most part you know and, and so when you tag on characters that you don't really like and you think are pretty dumb you tack on accents that they can't that you don't understand when they speak in them and then constantly drop the accents and you think of not that funny you know when you think of different plot lines that don't mesh and you think of me being bored throughout a lot of it and, and while there is you know the songs are kind of cool and i mean i do like the the kind of russian you know, guy who wants to go with Sigrid. I kind of like his character. While I didn't understand his motivations for any of his actions, I kind of liked his character. But that does not redeem its fact factor that it's a comedy, but yet the jokes don't work, and I just don't like the characters. And the story is never really fleshed out. So, yeah, overall, I don't think it was the best film by any stretch of the imagination. Stay tuned for more videos coming at you.